As we know, today is the Sunday of the Lord uh, meeting and conversing with the Samaritan woman in the Gospel according to St. John chapter 4. And as we have said also before, the Lent is a journey for us um, to go through and, and to reach the Passion Week and ultimately the resurrection of our Savior. And we're halfway through Lent. Um, <clears throat> and in a sense, this is the time where the church says, okay, now we need to kick it into second gear. Um, and if we take the analogy further, the third gear is the Passion Week, and the fourth gear is Good Friday. Um, <clears throat> and then it's basically downhill um, from there. Um, We'll just contemplate on a few verses of today, uh, because as you know, probably in, in, in a couple of months, we're going to read the same gospel book for different reasons. Um, <clears throat> so the first uh, verse we'll contemplate on is the verse 6, where it says, Jesus, therefore, being wearied from his journey, sat thus by the well. It was about the sixth hour. Um, one of the Orthodox writers says that the meaning of all this is clear. We're in mid-Lent. On the one hand, when he talks about the middle of Lent, he says, on the one hand, we have the spirit, spiritual and the physical effort. If it's serious and consistent, it begins to be felt, and the burden becomes more burdensome. Our fasting, our, our fatigue becomes more evident, and we need help and encouragement. So I think that's one reason why this beautiful gospel is placed in the exact middle of the Great Lent, <clears throat> after many weeks of fasting and frustration and limitation of certain things, we begin to feel a little weak, a little faint um, physically. It needs physical endurance, but more importantly, spiritual encouragement and strength. And that's probably why in the Gospel of today, the Psalm of the Gospel says, uh, let the heart of those who seek the Lord rejoice, and then seek the Lord and be strengthened. Seek his face continually, Remember his wonderful works that he has done, his wonders and the judgments of his mouth. So we need to seek the Lord and his strength, not only today, but every day of, of our lives. <clears throat> and as St. Paul said in the uh, Pauline epistle of today, when he talks about the armor of God, he says, be strong in the Lord and in his might. Um, not only that, but we also have to remember um, what we celebrated uh, last week is the, the cross. Right? Actually, other Orthodox churches, some of them, they place, instead of the gospel of today, in the middle of the Lent, they place the cross. We'll talk a little bit about that in, in a minute. Um, but <clears throat> Lent is a sense, our, in a sense, is our cross. It's our self-crucifixion, our experience of, of partaking of the sufferings of Christ. <clears throat> um, as the Lord said, if anyone comes after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross, and, and follow me. <clears throat> um, but today, more specifically, Actually, from yesterday, last Sunday, until the rest of the Lent, uh, the, in the beginning of the Lent, the church placed the foundational principles of our spiritual life. And then, um, starting from last Sunday, um, there's special stories or intimate um, uh, relationship that we have with God based on those figures. So, as we remember, last Sunday was what? Sunday of the prodigal son, right? Which was not a, a real story, it was a parable. Um, uh, and today, this, the Lord comes to the Samaritan woman. Actually, um, these two Gospels are, are strongly connected because um, last Sunday, the, the Lord um, speaks of the importance of repentance, and today we see the real story of the life of repentance. Um, <clears throat> and then next Sunday... We see the Lord healing the paralyzed man and the following Sunday healing the blind man. So these, uh, we have to, in a sense, take these examples of these people and place ourselves in, in, the, in their place and see the personal relationship and the strength and the, the conversation that the Lord has with them, he has with each, each and every one of us. Um, so um, we'll focus on one verse, um, which is verse 4. Um, I'm sure some of you noticed this before, but it says that the Lord needed to go through Samaria. Um, the Lord visited Judea often, so just the backstory, he was um, 
he always stayed in which city? Mm -hmm. The area of Galilee, right? And he often had to visit and, and wanted to visit Judea or Jerusalem um, for, for the feasts and other things and service. Um, so when he is leaving Judea, coming back to Samaria, um, uh, sorry, coming back to Galilee, he, he intentionally visits, it says he needed to go through Samaria. Um, many people know that Samaria, Samaria is the shortest and the safest way from Judea to uh, Galilee, but the Jews did not go this way. Um, they despised the Samaritans. Um, just a little history. After the Assyrians conquered um, northern Israel, the Israel what, so what the Assyrians do after they conquer is basically they, they, not, they don't just want to take the city, but they want to demoralize and um, weaken the people and their, and their national strength. So what they would do is they would take the, the people captives and send them all out throughout different regions of their empire. And in place of them, bring other people from around the empire at, to, to live in, in the place that they just conquered. <clears throat> um, and that's what happened uh, with, with the, the area of Samaria here. Um, and later on, after this happened, um, they, they wanted to, they had some problems and they wanted to go back to God. Um, so, of course, like we know, there's a hodgepodge here of different um, nationalities and different cultures and different beliefs. So they found a Jewish priest to create for them a hybrid religion of Judaism and Greek and Iraqi, for example. Um, and this is why they created high places to worship. Um, that's why the Lord talks with, with the Samaritan one today about uh, the place of worship. And she says, uh, talks about Mirazim and things like that. Um, <clears throat> So the Samaritans had a wrong understanding of worship. They had a wrong understanding of, of, of the Messiah. Um, and they had a, a wrong understanding of um, what is proper. Um, so it was a mixed race with a mixed religion. Um, and this is why the Jews intentionally avoided passing through the city, because they considered them heretics, unbelievers, and those who defiled the law and defiled the worship. Um, but the Lord says he needed to go through Samaria. Why did, what, what, what does God need? Uh, God only needs one thing. We always say in our prayers and even in our, we, we need a lot of things. But actually most of those things are wants. And there's only one thing that is needed. And, and the Lord God, what does he need? He doesn't really need anything but except for one thing. What did he need from Samaria? He needed that woman. Right? <clears throat> um, what does he need from me? He needs me. Right? What do we really need? We only need God. Um, so this woman was weak. She was outcast. She was shamed. She was um, relatively insignificant, even to her own people who, who themselves were outcast um, from the Jewish people. Um, yet the Lord wanted, wanted and needed her. Um, he needed to go to the outcast. He needed to go to the one <clears throat> who thought that she was worthless. The only reason why she thought this was because not only of her sins, but because even her own people who were outcast from the Jews cast her out because of her mistakes. Um, and so she began to think of herself the way others thought of her, and worse. But God needed to go to her to say, no, you are special. Um, you are, yes, you're sinful, but I can erase your sins. Yes, um, you might be ignorant, but I can give you wisdom. You might be worthless, but you're very valuable and precious to me. You might be shameful, but I can erase that so you can be proud in me and proud in the creation um, that, that I have made you in my image. So <clears throat> this, is, this is the understanding that we need to look at. Sometimes we take um, the same mentality as this sinful woman. We, we, we place ourselves in, in a situation where it says, oh, I'm not that important to God. Um, or... I, because of my sins, you know, God is not going to accept me. Um, <clears throat> or this person is saying something negative about me. I will believe it and think this is how God thinks about me. No, that's, that's far, furthest from the truth. So God needs us even more than we think. Um, 
and he sees the potential in us because he created us in his image and he knows that if we come to him he can make us like himself again um so um you have we have a lot of burdens just like uh we were saying uh, we have a lot of crosses that we're carrying but the lord is saying i am your strength um and and as the psalm says let the hearts of those who seek the Lord rejoice. Um, so we need to seek the Lord and his strength. If we feel weak, hey, Lord, be my strength. Um, <clears throat> and so, um, uh, again, we say that although we are climbing this mountain, if you will, uh, during the Great Lent, um, and, and we are tired, but at the top of the mountain, we, we kind of see the end of, of our voyage, or the end of the journey. So, um, and, and this is the light or the joy and the power of the Holy Resurrection. Um, <clears throat> so when we feel overburdened, we don't need to stop praying, but we need to start praying harder, right? We don't need to stop going to church, but attend more often. We don't need to stop reading our Bible. Sometimes when we're weak, we say, okay, I don't have time for this, or I'm not in the mood to do this or that when we're talking about the spiritual life. But in actuality, we need, it's, it's, a, it's a sign that we're, further from God, and we need to be uh, closer. Not to add an additional burden, but the Lord says, come to me, and I will release your burden from you. <clears throat> um, so uh, what does the psalm tell us to do? Well, we need to have the change of mind. We have, to have this, this matanya, right? Um, so the psalm continues to say, we need to just to remember things. So he says, number one, we remember his marvelous works, which he has done, his wonders, and the judgments of his mouth. Um, so what does that mean for us? Um, when we remember his marvelous works and the wonders that he has done, we can see those in the Old Testament. We can see those in the New Testament. We can see those in the lives of the saints. But we also can see that in our personal life. Um, the only thing we need to do is remember. Um, some people... Um, might take like a personal journal of, of sorts to look back at times when they're weak to see. So one exercise people can do is when, um, when they feel God present and powerful in their life, make a note of it. Um, and when you feel weak, go back to the note. Um, that, that's one purpose or one, uh, one way of, of why, for example, we have the scriptures. So we see the people who are weak and God strengthening them. We see the people who were lacking holiness and the Lord forgiving and strengthening them, right? We see the people who are lost and the Lord coming to find them and 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 removing them of their burdens. Um, of course, we see the opposite too. But but in in our daily life, we should take note of, of the times and the days um, that the Lord is with us. Um, because if he was with us, then he can be with us now. He's always with us, but we forget that he's there. Um, so these are just reminders of, of his presence with us. Um, <clears throat> so we remember his marvelous works, which he has done, and his wonders. But, but the last part of the psalm is the hard part. It says, Re remember the judgments of his mouth, right? Um, so if the love and the mercy and the strength and the kindness of God is at work, may maybe um, the, the reminder of his judgments um, and, and, and fear, maybe we need to remind ourselves of, of the importance of the fear of God. Um, but it's it's not just the condemnation and the punishment of those, but also the salvation uh, and deliverance and defense of the righteous. So the judgments of God are twofold, right? Um, they are the the verdict can be either guilty or not guilty, right? Um, we are guilty because he he takes the punishment. Um, he we deserve the punishment of our sins, but um, he takes the punishment if we ask him to. So that's that's the not guilty verdict. Because the punishment has already the pay, the price has already been uh, paid. <clears throat> uh, so, in a sense, when we remember His marvelous works, when we remember the the wonders that He has done, when we remember His judgments, both good and bad, then um, we 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 our minds become transformed, and we we become like this woman of of today, who uh, the Lord needed to go through her, but. He needed to change her understanding of who she is and who she can be. Um, yes, we're all sinners, but because Christ died for us and because Christ loved us and because 
God opened the doors of paradise through his sacrifice, then all we have to do is just follow in his steps um, and uh, change our understanding of what is good and what is bad. Change our understanding of what is truly needed and, and, and what is uh, an accessory in our life. Um, and, and this is what the Lent is for. Uh, the Lent should be a, a, a source of happiness, a source of joy, a source of strength, um, and a source of uh, true in, uh, intimacy with God. <clears throat> uh, but we have to get past the, the first part, the, the burden of, of the, the food and, and, and the fasting and um, the, the extra diligence that we have in the spiritual life. That should be there. And if it is, then, then we'll see the blessings of taking it in, into second gear. Um, may the Lord God give us um, the, the power and strength uh, to endure uh, the fasting so we see his face and, and uh, we, we feel his presence every day of our lives until we be with him forever. Glory be to him now and to the age of our